I just want to cover, let's start off with defining what vision is. Vision is a preview of what God is going to do. So vision is about the future. Uh, it also means a word from God, a promise, a prediction. Why, why promise? Because when God gives you a vision, a word, a dream, an idea, it comes with a promise. God is not teasing you. He's giving you a preview. Wouldn't it be great to know what God's plan is for your life? Because if you would know that, life would not freak you out. Because you would know, I'm here, but I know where I'm going. The scariest thing in life, and I think all of us, is not knowing at all what the future holds. And if you don't know what the future holds, life, challenges, obstacles will overwhelm you because they'll make you and convince you, they'll make you think and convince you that where you're at now is where you're always gonna be. This is your destiny. Nothing will ever change. But God did not create you to live a life with no purpose, no sense of direction. He never intended for you to live a life with no aim and no passion. God created you to live a life of passion. Let me give you a scripture here and let's see what the Bible says. Isaiah 48, three says this. Long ago, I told you what was going to happen. Then suddenly I took action and all my predictions came true. What God is saying in the scripture, I showed you what was going to happen. Then I took action and everything I showed you before it happened came true because everything I will show you will come true. But there's a pattern in this scripture. God reveals it. God shows it. Then he does it. So without new vision, nothing new will happen in your life. There's almost like a spirit that's trying to keep us blind or keep us spiritually deaf that we don't hear from God. Because if we don't hear from God, nothing new is going to happen in your life. I told you what was going to happen. Then I suddenly took action. I would say this, to say it another way. God, re first revelation, then manifestation. Without revelation, you'll never see anything new manifest in your life. For 2021, 2021, God has a dream, a vision for you to accomplish. This year, either you get the vision and at the end, the vision will be accomplished or you don't get any vision. You don't set any goals. And you know what 2021 will be? A waste of time. Now, time is a, a very valuable asset. You get 24 hours a day at a time, but you cannot recapture lost time. You can recapture lost money. If you lose money, you could always get it back. But time, you can never get back. There's going to be a day that you breathe your final breath. And I pray that you don't live your whole life not even knowing what you are here to do. The enemy is doing everything he can. And I say, enemy, there's a real devil that has a real system to get you trapped, to get you offended, to make you angry, to keep you abused, to keep you addicted to keep you lost, to keep you in that condition your whole life. You were not created to be angry. That's a vision to be angry, a vision of revenge your whole life. That's what's going to be your defining moment. Someone hurts you and you'll never forgive them. That's not life. You're trapped. You were never meant to self-medicate yourself with whatever addiction or bad habit that you have. Those things are lying deceptions, lying definitions of who you are. 
crazy thing that we start confessing these false identities over our lives. I'm a drug addict for the rest of my life. I'm angry. I'm depressed. I'm full of anxiety. I'm this, I'm that. These are definitions, but this has nothing to do with your purpose. It's time for you to shake all that stuff off and say, no, if God has a plan for my life and God has an identity for my life and God has a purpose for my life, I want that to, be, to start right now. I showed you what was going to happen and all my predictions came true. And I love what it says. I showed you what was going to happen and suddenly I took action. This scripture is saying, until I show it to you, I won't even act on it. We see that pattern in the Bible. You know Mary in the Bible, the mother of Jesus in the Bible. Before she was born, God already, that was part of the plan. This was not a lotto pick. They didn't put the, all the names in a ro rotating little thing and then pull out a name. Mary, you're the lucky one to be Jesus' mother. Before she was born, there was a purpose. An angel came to her and gave her a vision. You will be the mother of Jesus Christ. And after she received that word and it was revealed, she got the vision, then the Holy Spirit acted and she became pregnant with the Savior of the world. This is what God is saying. I want to give you vision and I want to, I want to give you a seed of greatness in you. Don't get intimidated with God's ready to tell you because what God's ready to tell you is greater than your past experience, is greater than your education, is greater than your ability, is greater than your power. You're going to have to depend on God's power to carry out or fulfill or accomplish a God vision. You guys get that? Today's vision school. And what I'm ready to show you is so powerful. If you learn this skill of getting vision, setting goals and accomplishing them, you'll be a major asset everywhere you go. Most people are so short-sighted, all they could recognize or all they could acknowledge is what it is. They can't acknowledge what it could be. We need some people to get some vision. My family's here, but it could be a lot better. We are here, but... There, the future looks a lot better than it is now. It's vision from God. We need some visionary leaders. I remember that there was a day that we, God gave me a vision to reach our inner city children. And why inner city children? Because right now, gangs are discipling our little boys and little girls in the neighborhood. Drug dealers are discipling our little boys and little girls in the neighborhood. Pimps are right now in our neighborhoods, in our tough areas. Pimps are right now discipling our little girls and telling them that they're hood rats. Your, your, what your purpose is, is for guys to sleep with you, will collect money. That's your value to us. That's happening every single day in the neighborhood. And we as a church have a vision that God's given us to reach them. Because if we do nothing, nothing's going to change in the neighborhood. We don't like the violence that's coming out of the neighborhood, the drug addiction, the pain, the murders, the crime. We don't like none of it. But the question is, who has the vision to bring about change, restoration, love, and bring these children into a family? So we had a vision. And I remember me and Pastor Robert talking about it. I go, Robert, I think we could do this. Why don't we start a bus ministry and go into the toughest neighborhoods we could find and bring those little boys and little girls, get them on that bus and bring them to church. Give them a break from the hood. Give them a break from the darkness. Give them a break from the pain. Give them a break from the sexual abuse and bring them to the house of God and love them and speak into them, and introduce them to Jesus, and introduce them to, to love and a family. Now, this was a problem. At that time, we had no money for buses. I didn't know where to get a bus. We didn't have one bus. 
But I believe this was, it was a big ministry. And this would happen while we were talking about it. While we were talking about this bus ministry, a local church called us up and they said, um, we were in our staff meeting and we are now getting rid of all of our buses. And I don't know, your name came up. Do you want buses? I never talked to anybody about buses. This sound, I thought it was a secret conversation. And God says, it really wasn't a secret conversation because I first gave it to you and I was going to make it happen. I just needed to make sure you received the vision, spoke the vision, believed for the vision, and I was going to suddenly start acting. <clears throat> so they called us and I thought, they're going to want us to buy these buses. We have no money. We just barely started this church. The majority of the people that were coming to our church were homeless from the neighborhood. And I said, how can we buy those buses? So I went down there and I went to go look at the buses and I thought, I thought he thought that we had money and they were gonna sell us the buses they wanna get rid of. So I went right in the meeting and I'm talking to their chief financial officer. I go, look, I don't know what you guys are planning to do here, but we don't have any money to buy any buses. So you know that, right? He goes, I didn't ask you if you had any money. I go, all right then. Just go look at the buses. So we looked at the buses, and they had a fleet, I would say, maybe 12 buses. He goes, which one do you want? Which ones do you want? And I go, well, I was just brave. All of them. <laughs> he goes, you have all of them. And that moment, they signed over 12 pink slips for 12 buses. And now we had a fleet of buses that were in our parking lot that we could go out there and pick up little boys and little girls. That It was like two weeks later, we had buses, like big, like Greyhound buses, picking up little boys and little girls in the neighborhood. And it all started with just receiving a vision from God. Think about it. Maybe the only thing that's missing is you don't know what God is saying about your life. And maybe you don't know what God is saying about your life is because you haven't exposed yourself enough to conversations like this. Or maybe you're so wrapped up in your problems, you're so wrapped up in the news, you're so wrapped up with daily agendas, you're so wrapped up in your to-do list, your YouTube, your Instagram, your all the other stuff that we got going on, your Netflix, your movies, that you have no time, your sports, that you have no time to hear from God about your future. Just think about that. We need, why are we fasting for 21 days? If you're here for the first time, we are fasting for 21 days. You know what we're saying? We're getting rid of all distractions because this is what we want to do. We want to hear from God. God, I'm going to give you three easy steps on how to accomplish a vision for your life. A God vision for your life. You're right now sitting in a God vision. This was a warehouse, but before it was a church, before thousands of people came, you know what it was? A warehouse. It wasn't a church. We needed to get a vision from God that God wanted this location to be a church, and then God would suddenly act and put everything in place for this to be a church. And all of it was created. Why? Because God had a vision to meet you and have a relationship with you. I would say this. Millions of dollars have been sent, and you're worth it. A sacrifice have been made, and you're definitely worth it. All this for you. Thank God God has a vision. So three easy steps to accomplish a vision. Number one, very simple, get a vision. Vision answers the question. It answers the question, what are my goals this year? Where am I headed? What am I believing for? What areas am I going to put effort and work in? What is my aim? What is my target? If you can't answer that question now, this year, before we get out of January, Let's get some answers to those questions. I'm going to show you how to get some of those answers to that question. But we need vision. I have good news for you. 
God wants to give us and give you brand new vision. Brand new vision. Let's look at Isaiah 48, 6. Great scripture. You have heard, this is God speaking. You have heard my predictions and seen them fulfilled. What's, uh, what's a vision? It's a promise. It's a prediction from God. He goes, every time I show you something, this is what happens. Fulfilled, 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 fulfilled. You've seen that happen. You've seen that. You've seen the pattern, but you refuse to admit it. Now, look, now I will tell you new things, secrets you have not heard. They are brand new, not things from the past. So you can't say, we knew that all the time. If you're ever going to see something new in your life, you're going to have to get new vision. And he's saying, the vision I'm going to give you has nothing to do with your past. You know what he's saying is, it has nothing to do with your ability, with your experience, with your education, with what I've done before. What I'm ready to do is so brand new, you could only get it done through me. You're going to feel totally inadequate when I give you the vision because you're going to look at your past experience and you're going to know, I can't do that. I've never done that. And God is saying, exactly. That's why you're going to have to depend on me. And at the end of the year, you're going to be able to say this, God did that through me. You're not going to say, I did it. You're going to say, God did that through me. And you're going to tell others, can you believe that? And they're going to say, no, that's a miracle. Are you ready to step into miracle territory? Are you ready to step in to greatness this year? Are you ready to let God use you to blow people's minds that they never thought they discounted you and God says, you discounted them, but I counted them in. See God for some vision. God wants to show us brand new things, things that have never been done. God is ready to do them through you and I. I think that's some good news. How many believe that's some good news? Now, don't let, as we're talking about get a vision, don't let past failures and present circumstances talk you out of God's vision for your life. If God reveals it, he will help you do it. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Look what the scripture says. Now to him who is able. Who's able? Who's able? Him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams according to his power that is at work within us. He said, when I give you a dream and a vision, you're going to depend on my power to get it done. You know, I think we're underestimating the power of God working through us. God could use anyone that just allows themselves to tune into God and say, God, lead my life. Show me what is going to happen. Give me a preview of my future. Does anybody want a preview of their future? God is saying, I'm going to show you brand new things. And I'm going to do it according to my power working in you. That is so powerful. God chose just regular people, these 12 disciples. And if you look at the 12 disciples that he chose, um, one of them betrayed him. All 11 of them turned their backs on him. And these very people that turn their backs on him, he resurrects from the dead, has one more meeting with them. And what he says, my vision for you has not changed. You might have messed up. You might have failed. But I still am going to do a great work through you. She says, the vision is go out there and transform the whole world. We were running and now you're giving us a worldwide vision. He goes, yep, I'm going to do it through you. Are you guys ready for God to do something great through you? Someone say, get a vision. 
Our church vision for 2021, I'll give you some of the stuff. We're going to reach 3,000 new families. We're going to launch out a church in Pomona. You know, we just went down there yesterday. Pomona, we had our Dr. Block team in the hood. This is what we do. We talk to the police department before, when we go into a neighborhood and we're going to a city and we say, what's the most dangerous neighborhood that you have? Where are you getting all your calls from? And they gave us the address and they thought we were asking so we wouldn't go there. We were asking so we would go there. So we showed up in a tough area this week and, or Saturday, yesterday. And one of the ladies said, hey, do you know what neighborhood you're in? And they go, we know. They said, but don't come here at night. You come here at night, there's a lot of people getting shot, stabbed, cr cr criminal activity, prostitution. And, and then, you know, it was actually Pastor Rob knocked on the door. Pastor Rob goes, no, we're coming at night. Because we have a vision and we have a ministry already started. And, 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 and it's called Light Up the Night. We're not a ministry that's running from danger. We're running to danger to help some people get out of danger. That's what we do. That's called vision. So what is light up the night? We're going to go in there. We're going to bring up. We're going to bring. This is what we're going to do. We're going we're to. We got to get this. We're going to get a truck that you could just drop down a stage in any hood at any time. Just boom, drive by Jesus. And then get. And all of a sudden out of the truck, our worship team comes out. Boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden, a preacher comes out. Hey! Ah, no. This is what we're doing in 2021. This is not a dream. This is not a wish. Come on, this is an assignment from heaven. And God is looking for a team that's willing to say, yes, we're ready to go where the danger's at. You know, you have to be willing to die for this stuff. We got to get rid of all sissy Christianity. How are you going to do a great work if you're scared of every little devil that's around the corner? You got to wake up and realize that God is with you when he gives you a vision. Come on, he, you can face whatever giant and you can take him out because it's God's vision. It's God's power that's working through little old you. So number two, I, I, I got vision. I got a whole bunch of vision. I, I, I'll read another one. We're, we're, we want to get our youth ministry to 500 strong. We want to build, we want to create a study hall for our children and youth. Right, I was talking to Robert. There's 50,000 kids that right now in our school district that are not even right now checking in for school all year long. The school district called us up this week and we got to talk to them and they want us to help fill that gap. I thank God they're realizing that we need to partner up with God on this thing and we need a breakthrough. Why? Because we're bold enough to go knock on their door and say, hey, little Johnny, where you been? And we're not just going to see where he's at. We're going to have a study hall. We're going to have some mentorship. We're going to love him. We're going to start a sports program. We're going to start a sports program in the hood starting this year. Our goal this year, sports for the children, study hall here. We are going to make a difference. How does great vision like that happen? How do things come onto the scene that have never been there? Someone gets a vision and says yes. Aren't you glad you're part of a church that's saying yes? Number two, create a plan of action. So number one, get a vision. And number two, create a plan of action. Creating a plan of action answers this question. What are the steps I need to take to see the vision come to pass? Or... What is the deadline to accomplish these steps? How will I get it done? Who do I, need, who do I need to help me get it done? Who do I know that has already accomplished these goals that can give me insight and mentoring? What do I need to do to prepare myself to achieve the goal? So these are questions that set in a plan will answer. How God sets this up that with every vision, God gives a plan of action. With every vision and every building that's built, there's blueprints. Without the blueprints, there's no building. I have an idea. You draw it out on paper. That's fine. Where are the blueprints? 
So when God gives you a vision, he also gives you a plan of actions, which are the steps that need to be taken for that vision to be accomplished. Get the vision and get the download of the plan. Let's look at Nehemiah 2.11. Nehemiah was a man that he had a, a vision of rebuilding a city that was in utter ruins or in ruins for like a hundred years. The city was in ruins. Their walls were all tor torn down. And we say walls torn down because back in the day, the strength of the city was based on the strength of the walls. Once the walls of the city would come down, then the enemy would be able to go in, rape and pillage the people to no end. They would get a harvest that they worked so hard for. The surrounding enemies would say, they're an easy prey. Go in there and rip them off. Their young girls were actually taken as slaves and they would be sexually abused and raped. They were living in poverty and constant fear of the enemy coming because they had no protection. But there was a man that had a vision, just one man. He never, ever participated in construction. He never did a building project, but he had a vision from God. If no one rescues them, if no one goes in, they remain, they remain abused, they remain in poverty, they remain lost, they remain, oh, you say, going to hell. Someone has to be willing to fill the gap and be a champion. So Nehemiah says, I'll be the champion, Lord. If you could use anybody, give me the vision. I'll run with it. So he runs with it. So God gives him a vision. So now he's moving towards Jerusalem, the city that needs to be rebuilt. But look at what he says. And, and Nehemiah 2.11 says, So I arrived in Jerusalem three days later. I slipped out during the night taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. What's it I have not told anybody about the plans God put in my heart. God not only gives you vision, but he'll make you smart enough. He'll give you steps to accomplish the vision. God not only has a vision that he wants to implant in your heart, he wants to get a plan of action in your heart as well. You might not know how to do it, but God sure knows how to do it. Of course, it takes time. Time for what? Time aside to hear from God. Time aside to write out vision, write out a plan of action. You know what it's called? A business plan. Do you know that the banks have certain dollars set aside to launch out new businesses? But they will not give you a dollar until they see the business plan. And they know this, if the business plan is clear, if the business plan has been thought out and they look at it, they go, of course this will succeed. If you carry this out, you will definitely be profitable. This is the question I have for you. Are you putting any effort getting a vision for your life or a plan for your life? You have a birthday party and you make a list of all the people that are coming. Then you get a to-do list. We got to get the party favors. We got to get the cake. We got to get, we got to get the taco man coming out. We got to get the DJ. And you go through the list to have an amazing party. But could it be that you're putting more effort in a birthday party than you're putting in designing your whole life? Where there's no vision, people perish. You know what that means? They quit. They give up. They backslide. They don't progress. They die out. 
People that backslide, they start off the year strong and then they backslide. You know why they backslide? They had no vision. You guys get that? So I'm going to give you a practical way. Let, let, let's look at it. So he says, um, he told no one the plans, they put it in heart. But I'm going to give you a practical way to set goals. Someone say set goals. Very simple, practical thing I'm going to show you. And it's called, practice the seven by seven setting goals technique. This is what I want you to do. I, I believe, you, no, I know everybody could do this. Write down seven goals you want to accomplish this year. I'm going to frame it. What if all seven that you wrote, God will make sure happens in your life? And what if what's not written down will not happen? God is saying, if you don't get the vision, it won't happen. Nothing new will happen in your life until you get some vision up for 2021. Each one of us, if we wrote down seven things we want to see done in 2021, you got a really good chance for those seven things to come to pass. The other thing, seven by seven, each one of the goals, write down seven steps to accomplish the goals. So you'd have 49 action steps. I'm going to give you an example. Goal number one. Let's say your goal number one. I want to grow spiritually this year. So now you write down seven steps, seven things you could do to become more spiritual. I'll give them to you. One could be, I will start off the year with a 21-day fast and tune in to our daily devotionals. Do you know right now, every day we've created a video for you to sit down and watch, 10-minute video, so 21-day fast, but we're also giving you some spiritual food? You grow. Number two thing I could do, I will read one chapter of the Bible every day and take notes on what I've learned. Number three, I will start and complete the growth track this year. Starting at the way, uh, uh, prospering at the way, freedom at the way, leading at the way. Have you started? That's one of the ways you could grow. Number four, I will attend all impartation services and all Sunday services this year. It's a commitment. You're right. These are steps I can make. What's impartation service? On the 27th of January, uh, we're going to start three-day, really a four-day revival. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to open up the first night. This place is going to be electric. Don't miss it. It's going to be an impartation of vision and words from God. Vision is a word from God. You're going to get a word from God for 2021. Um, Thursday night, we got Bishop Bronner. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my life. He's an amazing communicator. He's been teaching all the biggest churches. He has a huge church in, in Texas, and, and he's a Multi-millionaire, they have this multi-millionaire, they have this big business. He has one of his products in Walmart, which ended up being they, they sell one of his products for his business that he sells in Walmart, Walmart, and it being the biggest sale, I mean biggest item that's sold in all of the, all of Walmart. There's not a product that sold more than his product. He's going to be here Thursday with some wisdom. He's going to come with a word of God. You don't want to miss it. Impartation of great things. They're doing great things. Then Friday, we have Pastor Obed from Cathedral City. He's hanging around with all the top leaders, of uh, Christian leaders in the United States. And, and he, I talked to him once in a while. He goes, man, I've heard this. I heard that. He's going to be here. And then um, Sunday morning, we got um, Dr. Dave Martin. He's like a business coach. He's an amazing communicator. He's going to be here Sunday morning. All I'm saying is, if God is giving out word, if God is giving out vision, don't you miss one of those services. It's time for you to get a word for God preparing you for 2021. Let's do our part. And it goes on to say, um, I will join a P12, um, discipleship group. Six, I will sign up and serve in a ministry this year. I will give my first fruit offering and tithe off all my increases this year. These are just some of the steps I can take to grow spiritually. And whatever goal you have, write down seven things and seven steps to get there. Now, if you, don't, I want you guys, if you don't have the discipline to write it, you don't have the faith to receive it. See, we want everything free with no investment. You're never going to get great results in any area you're not committed to put some work in. Work on your future. 
So the enemy can't just come and lie to you about your life. Because once you know about your future and you know where you're headed, the devil just can't lie to you anymore. You're not going to fall for just anything because you know where you're headed. I'm going to give you an example of that. I'm going to end with the last point. I, my mom told me, Marco, you're going to be a pastor. That's what God has called you to do. She would tell me over and over, when you were in my womb, in my stomach, I dedicated you to the Lord. You're going to serve God every day of your life. And at the end, you're going to be a pastor. You are a pastor. That's what you've been called to do. So, of course, so someone asked, what are you going to do? Well, at the beginning, when I was a kid, I said, I want to become a professional baseball player. But then I realized I wasn't good enough. I got cut from the high school baseball team, much less make it to the pros. But this is what happened. I remember my, my senior year, there was a really pretty girl in our school. She was one of the head cheerleaders in the school. And, and I was looking at her in biology class. And she was, on, she was like on a fork. I was on the one corner. She was on the, on the far corner over there. And I... And I, I was trying to get eye contact with her. But I, I, I didn't know what to do if I did make eye contact with her. So I just referred to movies and I just winked at her. <laughs> at the end of semester, they did something that the, the biology teacher said, why don't we switch seats? So I stayed in my seat. I didn't want to switch seats. She switched seats and she went and sat right next to me. The wink worked. <laughs> but as I was talking to her, I could realize that she was on a different wavelength than me. I could tell that the conversation was going lewd and lustful. And it was, it was really quick. She invited me over her house and she said, my parents aren't there. They're gone for a whole weekend. You could come over and we could just have some fun. And I knew what fun meant. <laughs> but what kept me from the fun was vision. What kept me from the fun and disciplined me to stay on track was that I was called to be a pastor. And if I'm called to be a pastor, I'm not called to do that. That has nothing to do with my future. So it gave me, it gave me the power to say no to the sin, no to the lust, no to the sex out of marriage, to say yes to a God and yes to a purpose and yes to a future. And I would even say this, yes to you. That's what vision will do. It'll cause you to have some self-control, some self-discipline because you're preparing for something. Okay, so the last step of accomplishing a vision. One is get a vision. Number two is create a plan of action. Get that from God. Practice the seven by seven technique. And then number three, very easy. Take action. Say it with me. Take action. See, good planning and hard work always lead to prosperity. Every person God uses to do great things, does all he can, and trusts God to do what he can. Miracles happen when vision, a good plan, and hard work are involved. All three ingredients create success. Let's read the scripture, Proverbs 21.5. It says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity. But hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Good planning and hard work. Not bad plans, really good plans. And hard work lead to prosperity, leads to abundance, profit, success, gain. But shortcuts lead to poverty or need, lack, or want. Now, there are no shortcuts. If you want to do great things, you're going to have to put some hard work in. If you want to accomplish what you've never accomplished, you're literally going to have to do everything that you can and that God will do the rest. The formula for success is very simple. You set goals and, you, and 
plus daily actions equal to accomplishment or equal success. So get a vision from God. Spend some time hearing. God wants to tell you what is going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. We're going to start a church in Pomona this year. I know what's going to happen. I know this, that we're going to launch out one more campus here in San Bernardino this year. So we're going to have one church and three locations in San Bernardino at the end of this year. I know this, that we're going to open up our food distribution warehouse and we're going to have freezers in there that we're going to give out better food than we've ever given out. I know that. I know this, that we're going to open up a home for foster girls that are transitioning out of foster system this year. I already know that. I know we're going to reach 3,000 families. I know we're going to baptize 2,000 people this year. I know 6,000 people are going to give their lives to Jesus. I know where we're headed as a church because I've got a download of what's coming. And God has a download for you. I'll say this. Hang out with us. We're going places. You're going places. And we're going to do this together. Stop focusing on your past because your past has nothing to do with where God is taking you. Well, I got a record. God says, forget about records. I, I can overcome all that stuff. You just follow me. I'll take you places. All they, they just know I got bad reputation. Don't worry about it. I'll use your bad reputation to do some great things. They won't, they won't even know what hit them because you're going to be like a secret agent. They're not even going to expect a uh, move of God through you. I'm going to use you. Are you guys ready to get some vision from God? So, this, so let's do what God has called us to do and let God do the rest. Pastor Robert, can you close us out? Let's give the Lord one more big hand if you receive from God something from God. Thank you. Hey man, what a great word. Let's all stand up, you guys. And before we dismiss today, what, wasn't that a great word, you guys? Great words. These are the type of messages and teachings. You want to hear it again. You want to go on the app. And don't forget, on the app, you guys, you have the notes right there. You have the notes. During service, while pastor is teaching, there's actually fill in the blanks right there. Tonight we'll have the answers. Tomorrow you could go on the app and download. You have all the notes right there to review it and then start to apply it. It's so good to see everybody here today. Man, got a packed out house today. This is wonderful. Before we end today, let's make sure, before we end, everybody's attention up here. Before we end, let's make sure that everyone is on their way to heaven. This is the biggest vision of all. We have to make sure. We have a few minutes. The word is important. The worship is important. And now is one of the most important times of the service. Where you have an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus. To get saved. This week has been tough. People that have passed away. We had two of our members pass away. Another one of Veronica's friend. Her, the organization that she works out. One of the person died there. Just... Just a crazy, crazy, heavy week, heavy, 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 as far as people passing. When I got the call from Michelle, man, it broke me. They're actually doing a tribute today at our downtown campus, Pastor Joe. They're doing a whole tribute for Michelle today at our Arrowhead campus. And we'll let you know about the funeral services for Michelle and Pastor John. And I look at all these people that have passed, and thank God, Michelle, she knew Jesus Christ. In heaven, we're going to see her again. Done. In heaven, we're going to see her again. But friends and family, you guys, there's a real heaven and there's a real hell. Not everybody goes to heaven. It's only those who put their faith in Jesus. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you died today and you took your last breath, are you on your way to heaven? Have you put your faith in God? Not a religion, not a church, has nothing to do with this. It's a relationship with Jesus. Have you surrendered your life to him? Because friends and family, look at all the people that have passed. And I'm talking to you guys. You guys have family members. You guys have co-workers right now that are in critical condition with COVID or sick, all kinds of things. It proves to us again, tomorrow is not promised. The next 30 minutes is not promised to you and I. The next 24 hours, it's not promised to us. Each and every one of us have an appointed day to die. We have a birth date. Pretty soon right now you're going to have a salvation date. And then after that, 
we have a day where we pass on to eternity. So here it goes. If you're saying, Pastor, I need God. I want to be forgiven of all my sins. I want to make sure, and you're watching this online right now, I want to make sure that I'm saved. I want to make sure if I die today, that I would go straight to heaven. Pastor, how do I get to heaven? It's real simple. All you have to do is put your faith in God. That's it. The Bible says in Romans 10, we confess Jesus as Lord. You confess Jesus as Lord. You are saved. So here it goes. You're in this room. You're online watching us right now. You're saying, Pastor, I want God. Man, I want to make sure if I die today, I'm going straight to heaven. I want Jesus to forgive me of all of my sins today. Or maybe you need to come back to God. Maybe you've been running and you're saying, man, I need to rededicate. I need to get right with God. Today I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, I'm going to count to three. Soon as I say that number three, I'm going to say one, two, three. As soon as I say that three, you're going to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. That's me. When I count to three, here it goes. One. You're online right now. You're going to stand up maybe in your living room. Get ready to raise your hands even online. Here it goes. When I say three. One, two, three. Three, raise your hands right now. Say, so that's me. I want God. I see a couple hands over here. I see a hand way over there in the back. I see a hand right there. I see a hand. Yeah, can you keep your hands up just for a few seconds? Yeah, I see that hand. Anybody on this side if I missed anyone? I see a hand way in the back. I see you. All those that just raised your hands. I see some hands over here off to my left over here. All those hands just raised. I want you to come down. Come meet me here in the front. And we're going to lead you right now in a prayer to give your life. And to surrender your life. Even if you didn't raise your hand, you're saying, man, I need God. I need forgiveness. Come. Come on down. This is your day. Come, come, come. Yes, you're online right now. Maybe you're at home. Just stand up for a second. And now I want us to do this. We got a few more people coming down. I want us to do this. I want you to take 20 or 30 seconds. I want you to ask the person you're standing next to. I want you to ask him this. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. I want you to ask him or her this. You're standing next to him. You're sitting there. Say, if you die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? I want you to turn around, ask the person next to you. Say, man, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. You can say, come on. I'll go down there with you. I'll support you at your walk with Christ. Take 20 seconds. Ask the person next to you. Say, hey, if you die today, where are you going? Do you know where you're spending eternity? Take 20 seconds. There you go. Yeah, there you go. He said, man, I don't know. Anyone else? This is a time of service. We don't rush. We let God just speak to people. And there might be a few more. Any more? Yes. Proud of you. Good job, man. Proud of you. Anybody else over here? All right. That's it right there. We have, we got, let me count. We got one, we got two, we got three, we got four, we got five, we got six, we got seven, we got eight, we got nine, we got ten, we got eleven. Give a round of applause. Eleven people right here. Maybe you're watching this online right now. Maybe there's some more online. Yes. I want everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. We got three more coming up. Two more. We got three more coming up. Give them a round of applause. Three more over here coming up. Good job. Good job. I want everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. This is your day. Maybe you didn't come down. You said, man, I should have went down there. What am I doing at my seat? It's okay. Just say the prayer right there where you're at. You're going to get saved right there. You're online. Join in this prayer with us. Wherever you're at, join in. Every head bow, every eyes close. You say, man, I need God. I want God to save me. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins, all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, I put my faith in you. Today, I am saved. I am born again on my way to heaven. Holy Spirit, fill me so I can live for God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.